I'm ready. Get the blitz. Cam ready, buddy. You don't look that excited. I feel like we need some of that 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 audio that's like. Bah, 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 bah. Da, 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 da. No, like when blitz comes on. Oh, the horn. I yeah. Know those. <laughs> yeah. I, I know which it. one you're talking about. Cue that intro. Pod. Pod. <laughs> Episode five. A lot has happened this week. When, yeah. Right? Have you had a great week? We need something to intro after our intro, I feel like. Or we need to no, like, that's why. Hey, you. we're here. Hi, we're here. Becca and Matt and Blitz, who's on the ground. Welcome. Strong. Welcome to the No Regrets podcast. Thank you for doing it with me. You're welcome. I also said I let you. I was roasting you last week or just spitting out incorrect statements being that you take, you do all the talking and you take too long to answer these questions and I'm going back and editing last episodes and you didn't talk hardly at all. It was just me ranting on about the questions. So I'm going to let you kick off our week recap. Do you have anything you want to talk about before I get to my few bullet points? Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July. Post Fourth of July. Everybody. Go. America. There you go. Okay, I think I figured out why I do all the talking in the in these episodes. Okay, we went over our goals. We made it to episode five. Party. Should have brought a confetti cannon. Second is I love I love doing everything that we do. From the gym to the podcast to making reels. We actually have a gym reels coming out this week that we need to edit today. I'm super excited about that one to uh, just dreaming big all around our, our fitness world and wanting to grow it. So if you guys want to know more about me personally is I, I'm a little entrepreneur. I love to hustle in different areas as far as like even building my own merch line and all of the, doing all these other things. And I've had this conversation recently with Matt because We've had a little bit more time through this season, being that our, our season got cut a little bit shorter than we wanted to. And just Did you creating... say cuts? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't get me fired up just yet. Just wait for that conversation. That I just put, came I, out like an hour or two I know. Ago. I already I put a little bullet point on here. But oh, okay. the, okay, I didn't okay, know okay, that. Okay. I just it was on Chill, the... chill. Okay, I'll stop, stop. I'm trying to do the happy things first. Um, but and don't affect my brain. Okay, you can't. You can't this do that. This is a conversation, you can't, not you can't soliloquy. Do that. Then me. I tried to let you converse at the beginning of this podcast, and you just said, "Go America." <laughs> so, hey, people should be thankful for living in this country. I agree, but talking about other goals, I was r really with the extra time. I wanted to lean into more of what we're doing, content-wise, and. Uh, being that part of our training is a little bit like unstructured right now, having a little bit more freedom to work on some of those other things. And a, a, while, a few weeks back, I was like, hey, I'm going to make a million dollars off of YouTube. Watch this. If you guys know me, like I'm, I'll hustle on that goal. And it, it's not even for the money. It's like a benchmark for me, like wanting to squat 300 pounds. It's wanting to hit these benchmarks on YouTube and social media and hustle on on that side. And then what did you ask me? Yeah, what are you going to spend the money on? <laughs> Guys, I gave her a big monetary gift for Christmas. And I was even like, hey, I'll go do this with you. We'll do it together. Zero dollars of that has been spent. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> so zero dollars. <laughs> zero. <laughs> So that being said, and that million dollar, literally million dollar goal that I have is that one, I would buy, I told them I'd buy a second squid hat because, oh, I should meant to bring the squid hat Hey, in this here. is what I said is like, you get a little Mr. Beast in, inspiration and make part of it like, hey, I'm making this, but I'm going to be given back in some way. Or totally. Make, that's a, 
can be a principle of your goal of doing it. Yeah, we we I brainstormed. Cool. We brainstormed a lot with that, and I do. We do have some big uh, plans when it comes to giving back to the community because I feel like the the community gives so much to us. And why are you laughing at me? Nothing. Okay. Why are you always no, laughing keep going. at me? So that is the the million dollar goal and we'll buy maybe maybe three squid hats if we do that but i also i'll pull i'll put a screenshot of this on the podcast if you guys are watching this right now i also said i ran across an, an instagram post i got sponsored it my my feed is full of the weirdest things anything from dog videos to weird household products to just a lot of comedy videos and everything, the suggestions that I get. And I got suggested this fruit furniture. First of all, I don't like fruit, but this fruit furniture. Li not liking is is not a strong enough or a description of your feelings towards fruit. You can hold off that thought right here because I'm about to get furious about the fruit talk. Okay. I, hate is okay. That's a better description. Okay. Anyways, going Go back to your to, chairs. Okay, I found this awesome. She likes fruit filling and she likes fruit chairs, just not fruit, fruit. furniture. <laughs> fruit furniture. <laughs> fruit furniture. I found a, a picture, a product online that was a coconut chair. It like, literally looks like a giant coconut and it's a chair, furniture that you sit in. And I said, when I make a million dollars on YouTube, I'm going to get us this coconut chair. And turns out there was a watermelon chair also on that website that you could sit in since you like watermelon so much. I call the coconut chair, though. And I just want you to know that that is the life you signed up for, is that when we have too much money, there's going to be coconut chairs and ponies around. And you and your squid hat. And squid on hats. On both of them. Yes. Can you imagine how great that would look? I'd look like a queen in a squid hat sitting in a coconut chair. That's my million dollar idea. You had a coconut saddle on your horse with your squid hat on. <laughs> that's okay, this mean. is getting out of control now. But that's the million dollar vision. Me in a squid hat sitting on a coconut chair with a pony off to the side. That reminds me That of... was the chair. It was not a fart. <laughs> That, you know what that is? That's, that's your happy place. You know, from Happy Gilmore. Yes. When it's like, and he goes to his happy place, and there's like the little, the little person. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Like, and one, that's another your happy great place. movie. Another great movie. I think we should reenact that okay. clip as like something that would be fun. But the problem is, we need the coconut share. Well, find a way. So step that. one: get a million dollars. <laughs> step two: buy a coconut chair and another squid hat. That's my. My million dollar dream. Also, I've made huge strides since the last episode. You want to know why? Because I am looking at my toes right now. You guys can't look at my toes. We talked about toe socks, and I mentioned how I don't like feet and like, like toes. But you've been walking around barefoot more. So I was like, I want to be more like him. So I had to paint my toes, one, because Get they were your feet ugly. in the grass, people. Or on the concrete Just or where, where there's dirt. less bugs, though. I don't want the bugs on my feet. But I'm learning to love my feet and put them on the ground more so I have less bunions. So huge strides since episode four. Anything else? No. For the week or what? Yeah, what? We're, we're wrapping Rap up. We're, we're doing the weekly chat. You, uh... I told myself I'd let you talk more. <laughs> Don't do that. I told myself I'd let you talk more, and this is what I get. This is what you guys get. So you get more just Rebecca chats. If I talk about this, like just random stuff, it's not going to be what people want to hear. You don't know that. You need to believe in yourself. No, they it's not that. It's like just weird thoughts on life and different things that. That's exactly. That's what I want to hear, too. These podcasts are just my ultimate brain dumps. Like, there's a lot of things up okay, here. Okay, here's a thought I had. And my brain is like Since this Fourth of July, and I kind of led with Fourth of July, I'll lead with this. Is like, talk about like the 1% of 
of the people that are most privileged in this world and all this that sort of thing is like if you were like literally there's people that have terrible circumstances I'm not trying to downplay that or pretend like that doesn't occur or doesn't happen but being a citizen of the United States in 2023 you're like the point zero 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 one percent of like humanity not just people alive right now but like of every human that's ever lived like how easy our lives are is so different than almost every human that's ever been born and lived and things they had to struggle with I just I think it's a thing that was interesting and I was thinking about you know we defected from I wrote the Declaration of Independence sent it to England and was like screw you no taxation without representation and I was like King George, that's who we were, we were trying to, he was the king of England, right? Would you trade places with King George? No. He was the king of like the whole world, pretty much. Britain was like the strongest country in the world. He was like the number one person in the world. And if you had to give up air conditioning, Wi-Fi, like your life as it is in all of the niceties of your life, you would not trade places with the most powerful person just 300 years ago. So anyways, that's the kind of weird stuff. But there you go, guys. That's how my brain works. See, another thing, this is what I love about you, and I'm confused about you. Love and love and confused every single day by you. <laughs> is, first of all, there's another question on here that is asking me about you, which I'm excited to get into, but before I lose my train of thought, because it's already fading away right now, is I think sometimes you you love me because your brain is running on thoughts like that, like actual legit thoughts that push our society forward. And then there's me over here that can help distract your brain from your very in-depth thoughts when I'm just like, hey, I want a coconut chair. <laughs> so we really balance each other out in that sense. That's true. I learn history from you. I don't like history. You want you know what? Well we do those... that's gonna be the solution to my sleep. Just put a history book in front okay. of my face. Here we go. And I'll fall asleep history instantly. podcast, boom. Dead. Asleep. That's gonna solve my sleeping issue. But that's where we really balance each other out. You think about things like that. I think about yeah. coconut chairs and squid hats. But we're both about the bits and we like being silly and yeah. Absolutely. Are we talking I'm, workouts I'm or hero like the hero one we did? Or are you gonna do Oh yeah. Before I I turn into Becca the Hulk version, when we talk about our next subject, we can bring up the hero workout that we did this week, Fourth of July hero workout. We changed it up or, this year. Or what was worse, the hero workout or Saturday's partner workout? I don't know. That we did together. I had fun on the partner workout. People said that one was nasty, yeah, though. It was. Um, you want to go over the hero workout? What was it? Hot Shots 19, or otherwise known, aka 19 Shotguns from Helmut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny story. But, anyways, it's Hot Shots 19, it's for a group of firemen that were uh, fighting the wildfires out in. Arizona, in 2013. what year? Twenty was it? Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Um, so it was cool. We've never done that one. We've done the same hero workout for I think eleven or ten years, and it was one I wrote for a member at our gym, and it was just like wanted to mix it up and do something a little bit different. So we got that one recommended. It was fun. Yeah. Oh, it was thirty air squat, six rounds, thirty air squats, nineteen power cleans. 135.95, seven strict pull-ups, 400-meter run. Yeah, it was really fun. It was a good one to run the class through, being that we could have a huge group of people doing it together and yes. free you know high-fives on was, the run. I was running back on the first round, and I was just hearing the barbells. Like, obviously, there's no one around because it's July 4th. I was like, it'd be so funny. Just some random person driving around, like, looking – just because all you could hear was just like banging of the barbells. Maybe it sounded like somewhat like fireworks going oh, off. Oh, yeah. Going off in the gym. Yeah. Anyways, in the morning, was driving around, they would have been like, what is going on? Because you could hear it all the way coming up, like just the bars yeah. dropping. Very fun workout. Very fun. And it was a good mix up this year. I had fun doing it. 
Uh, if you guys save that one for your list of hero workouts that you need to do. Hot Shots 19. And now for the drama. That is what I started ranting about this morning because we got the news this morning. I'm going to bring up the game's cut lines. Oh, there's that noise again. <laughs> but plain and simple, this is the most frustrating thing being that we've been to the game, you've been to the games plenty of times with athletes. I've been to the games a total of three times, two years as a teenager, and then one year as an individual last year. And guys, we talked about it a little bit last week because we got a question on how making it to the games versus not making it to the games financially impacts the athletes and the trip to the CrossFit games and just the season in general is so freaking expensive. And it sucks that we got to look at that from that way, but the sport doesn't have a ton of money in it just yet. And it's costing athletes so, so much to get to go live out their dream. And I'm really, really, really disappointed in what they did. Last year, we had one cut. It was, and it wasn't all the way until Sunday, the last day. Saturday and night. Saturday night. Season so year. going into the last day was the only cut line. This year they announced, they just announced two cut lines. And one of them's as early as Friday evening. So you're going to get two days if they do something on Wednesday. We don't know that. Do we know the schedule yet? No, we don't know the schedule yet. But that's so, so soon in the competition to have a cut line. And... There's a couple reasons why it, it's so frustrating. One is the financial impact. It's like you're pulling yourself, your coach, all your family that's wanting to go watch you live out your your dreams, and then and then you blitz eat boy. Blitz cam. Blitz cam. But back over here. You're going live out your dream, and it's just so. It's so it's so hard to get there financially. It's very, very expensive. And to be cut two days into the competition and not be able to compete the final two days is heartbreaking. It's it's plain and simple heartbreaking. The other thing is the programming. If you're going to bank on putting a cut line two days in the competition, that programming better be dead on perfectly balanced. No pressure. Better be perfectly balanced to make sure the test is correct hard in a sport where the the everything's constantly changing the workouts we don't compete the same thing over and over we compete everything different so you I hope you guys do a lot better than semifinals i'll just put it out there a lot better than that and just the whole year in general uh oh all my frustrations are coming out <laughs> it's getting real on the podcast take it over before i say something really really bad no i think that is definitely the athlete's perspective and the coach's perspective, I feel like, because they care about their athletes. Is Every athlete is going to want to compete through the entirety of the weekend. And I agree, too. That's especially the way the sport is. It should be that way. I look at the history. The, the, people can argue there's always been cuts, but it's always different. And, you know, there, there are times where people are still going to show up and compete but just not knowing beforehand where they maybe invested ten, fifteen thousand dollars, and then they find out they've already spent the money, they've already committed um, that they might not have a chance. And of course, you can say like, "Hey, you got to make the cut," um, but I don't think that's a way that, for the sport to truly support the athletes that make the sport. Right? Um, they should be supporting one another. So, totally get that's the athlete and my perspective as a coach. Um, I could see the argument of eyeballs and getting other people interested and wanting to have a smaller uh, or smaller athlete pool so you could do pull off certain events but like we've seen in the past i know 2019 is like one of the asterisk years um but like that was the at least some excitement for me or like that was the only reason to cut it down to 10 people on the final day was like they're going to do something crazy that we've never seen and then they did a salt bike and toes to ring and then they did a heavy clean ladder where some some of the people couldn't even do the clean because um for you guys the, the previous know. events weeded out a lot of the stronger athletes for you guys i don't know the 2019 year was where they took 
over a hundred athletes to the games, right. and then they had and they started immediately a ton cutting. Of, Cut and, and and then just to look at that too, and the, the importance of the timing of the event, events is look at the history of Pat Vellner and Britt Fakowski's finishes at the games every other year and that year. They didn't make the cut. I mean, I don't even know where they, I think they were, I don't, know I don't even know where it was. You can go back and look. But there, those are examples. And sure, you know, um, you can say the best person still won. Yes, Matt and Tia still won. But it's when you're try, trying to grow the sport, um, you need, you obviously want the best to win, and but you still want to have a fair test, and you still want to grow a stable of athletes to that more that brings in more and more fans, that more fans can relate to, that more fans get in touch with their social media and like get to be fans of the sport through different people. Um, so I, I highly and I and I definitely hate that too. Which, which you were saying about the programming, it just makes it, the earlier events be more, they can be weighted more. Um, the timing of the events matters. And there's just a, a difficulty in that where I feel like once you've made it there and you've proved the, that you earned that spot, I think it's more fair for the entire competition too. So if you are a really good top five athlete and you're more of a gymnastics based athlete but the early cuts the early events favored larger athletes you're not going to have as many gymnastics based athletes to help get you in between spots of people so you're going to have a harder time making up ground later in the weekend so there's some of those things like that that i think it still matters to have someone who might be 30th on the leaderboard but they can affect the final outcome by how they can compete in the, in the later workouts. Um, and then finally, the last thing I'll say is like at the games, the, the previous um, kind of natural way that it goes about it is, and you can argue this, maybe last year wasn't as much, but more of the outside of the box, um, swimming, stuff that's not traditional CrossFit doesn't come in until the last day. And so in some ways you're giving those athletes uh, that are more specialists, maybe not as the pure CrossFit athletes, some leg up so they can try to make it through the cuts and then compete versus if it was backwards and you had some more traditional CrossFit workouts at the beginning. And then at the end, you kind of had a more uh, diverse test that you don't see in the box every day. Actually, I think that would be a cool way to mix it up, especially if you're going to have cuts. Um, so I mean, I'm obviously, it's the CrossFit no, games. I want the CrossFitters cool. to do the best. It's cool to get your coach's perspective on it because you're such, you're not only what you said, like wanting the best for the athletes and the and you kind of have that, you're the, the coaches are the next closest things to the athletes to be able to see it from that perspective. But also like looking at the numbers is when you start competing and you start working out the numbers and I don't even know, does the, the scoring system change yeah, as they changes, do the, it, yeah. okay, so it does change as the, as the cut lines move on. But like you said, if this is such a, I do believe, and it's been proven, the best athletes will rise to the top, regardless. The, the top tier, the very, very top, the tip of the sphere will, ri will rise to the top regardless. And they, they should, that's what we're, we're testing for. You should be, you wanna be the best at, one of the best at everything that you do. But, it does create issues with what if this event was placed before this event, before the cut line and vice versa. And then it all, it doesn't even come down to the whole well-rounded picture. It's just comes down to where this was placed. it goes back to like a placed, financial thing too. Is, is but that's the most All 40 athletes thing. are getting paid. All one through 40. And so like there is a discrepancy in there. Timing is differently. Versus if you barely make the cut one day, you might be able to work your way into the top 20, but you might've been 30th and been the last or 31st, you know, just upon there's little things that like can make a big difference in how people earn money at the games. Like you barely make the cut or you barely don't, but at the next few events, you would have popped in the top 20 that matters. And like I said before in programming, I always want, want it to lean towards selecting what we think is the fittest through the methodology and through what CrossFit is. But if there is a time to devi deviate from that, it's to make the show so spectacular that you grow the sport and you make it awesome. So we bring more eyeballs, more money into the sports for all the athletes. 
And that's the only thing is like, if you're going to have cuts, that's that I want to see like some ama- like some stuff we've never seen. I don't want to see us just <laughs> on another pull-up you rig. You guys doing, better bring it. You know, <laughs> being on the pull-up rig, you know, on a rower and working across the floor like we always see. If that's the case, it should be, everyone should be there. So um, right. that's that's how I feel about it. I'm hoping for the best for all the athletes and the games itself because we will be back there again soon, fighting our butts off. But I hope they bring it this year. They better. They got a lot to prove this year. All righty. On to questions. Man, I, last, last week I was like, what kind of podcast is this? Is this a fitness podcast? Is this a CrossFit podcast? Is this a, I don't know what this podcast is, but it's fun. And get ready because we got some fun questions for you guys. First one. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. My question is, do you have any advice for someone starting CrossFit without any gymnastics or sports background? I just graduated high school and I'm looking to start taking CrossFit more competitively, but have absolutely no idea where to start as I feel I am so behind because I have no prior experience with sports. Or gymnastics and it's super frustrating with four exclamation points okay coolio the coolest thing about crossfit versus any other sport that you'll take on is it's all about hard work pure work it you don't have to be i mean it helps to be talented in a just a natural naturally coordinated person but it is all about grit and work ethic in the gym. Not sugarcoating anything. It helps to have an athletic background, obviously, because that athletic background is years of training, of years of being in the gym. But years of reps. And You've years already of done reps. reps and reps and reps. Yes, but you should not be discouraged about not having a sports background because all this sport is is the sport of hard work. That's why I love it. That's totally why I love it, is if you're willing to come in here and put your head down and appreciate the grind every single day, you will succeed in the sport. Okay, you just gotta be a, a, a little bit patient with it. Tips, I think from my, where what I can help you with in this question is, one, celebrate your little wins along the way. Don't get distracted by other athletes that might have uh, have been doing CrossFit longer or have that background that you might wish you have because you can't go back and get those days. What you can do is start from where you're at and start building. And then have fun with training. That means sign up for some local competitions if you're thinking about being competitive and dip your your toe in that water of just like, hey, is this something I want to do? Do I find these competitions fun? And then they start building, you'll get to the building blocks of, I start in local competitions, everybody starts there. Then you compete in the open and hopefully qualify for quarters. And then maybe next year or a couple of years down the road, you qualify for semis. And then it goes on and on from there. It just takes a lot of work. Man, I hope I didn't. Yeah kill that with our conversation before that dream with our conversation before oh because i love this sport i really do you have any advice yeah i'd say i would say first i i want to reiterate what you said is like you can't make up what you didn't do in the past so you got to let let that go those people have put in reps and you just got to focus on you and getting better every day the good news or a positive way to look at it is if you're a newbie at squatting or you're a newbie at some of these gymnastics things, if you take a beginner progression, you have a coach work with you, or you have a progression, you don't try to like skip past the fundamentals, you're gonna get those newbie gains. So you got like multiple years of like just consistent gains versus, you know, someone like Rebecca with the gymnastics background, she's gonna improve her gymnastics at some point, And then to get them a little bit bigger than that, or it's a lot of effort and a lot of like, um they they just happen less it's a little bit more slowly so i think that's one thing to have uh and to focus on is keep your focus on you and then enjoy that process because that's gonna be a motivating thing when you see those numbers go up all the time but the biggest thing i would say or the the caveat to that is 
make sure you're doing what you need to do at the level that you're at and not saying, I want to be a games athlete. I need to train like a games athlete. You might just need to be doing strict pull-ups and strict dips or strict push-ups or, you know, building that foundational strength before you do, you know, you're trying to do muscle ups or some of those things. So, um, just having a plan like that and focusing on where you're at, putting your head down. And like Rebecca said, if you want to, if you do the work, you yeah. can do the work yeah. and literally you can have, if you have the mindset and you're willing to go in the pain cave and work hard, you can build like a ridiculous conditioning engine and not be the most skilled at the other things. I mean, Sam Briggs, I mean, I know she'd spent a, a lot of time building that because she was into triathlons and stuff before, but she was never the best gymnast. I mean, she got to be great at like muscle ups and stuff because she was just so strong up her body, but not the heaviest lifter, but man, she had the best engine. And so the engine. you can you can build that with just tenacity and hard work. And that's kind of what you're saying is this this is the sport of hard work. And I've seen totally. it and I've seen it done by several people, like maybe not qualifying for the games, but just developing their competitiveness by just grit and hard work. I think the, this is so not cool. natural athletes, but have 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 really kind of even surprise themselves of where they've gotten. This is so cool. So we had two other questions on here that kind of I'm going to jump right to because they go back. We've kind of hit them already. Was one, why do you love CrossFit? And I think we just nailed it. And it CrossFit is the sport of hard work. And I forever will love that because if you work hard, I'm a total believer, if you work hard in whatever you do, you'll succeed in whatever you do. You just have to have that grit and determination to be – to say, I'm not done until I say I'm done. And regardless of whether it's, it's fitness or your business, I'm not done until I say I'm done. And I just have to put in the work to prove that. So that's why I love CrossFit. And then the other one that was on here, oh, it was what skill in CrossFit took you the longest to learn? And I was like, Obviously, gymnastics didn't take me that long, even though a muscle up was probably the one that took me the longest to learn in, in that that skill sense. But I still got it pretty fast and it was just more building the strength to be consistent with it. But it's funny because we just talked about gymnastics and leaning into like a gymnastics background and how I can catch on to that thing really fast where I feel like I still don't know how to lift properly. I still don't know how to snatch. I'm still working on it. So that's the cool thing about what this that's question brought up. That's the beauty of it's the like, lifts, though, She has too. no bad habits, or they. Yeah. They have no bad habits to overcome. Right. They're starting from a clean slate, and that's some of the coolest, some of the coolest athletes you can work with, actually, is yeah. when they have no I'll say that background. Just the, that's why I love Olympic lifting so much, and one of the beauties of it is – it's so complex and there's so many positions and um, whether it be developing your mobility in your squat or overhead or, you know, your timing or there's so many things and it's such a like beautifully complex movement that it's something that you're always fine trying tuning. to improve on and mm -hmm. fine tuning. You've never arrived. And obviously like even, even, you know, even, I guess once you get past the time of PRing, you can still work the movements and try to improve your bar path or um, they're still so beneficial. So that's one thing I, I love about the snatch and the clean and jerk is it's like a journey. It's like a forever journey. It's not, mm -hmm. you've never arrived. Mm -hmm. And you're always getting stronger. When the, yeah. the better you get, you're always going to get stronger. Very cool. Well, I wish you luck on your just CrossFit oh, journey. Oh, I, I have your journey. answer. My way answer for one. <laughs> The movement that you most had a hard time getting? A broad jump. Broad jumping. <laughs> which is very Jump, bad. Jumping, especially is, broad jumping. Which is very bad because that's just basic mechanics. <laughs> what is your favorite office episode? I have way too many, but my favorite opening is when Jim pops Dwight's exercise ball. Office fans, unite. Um, I, I think everybody would say, I hate to be basic, but everybody would say the scene of 
when the fire Dwight sets the fire alarms off. Do you remember mm-hmm. yes. that one yes. <laughs> where she, Angela like throws the cat through the ceiling and it comes off the other side of the ceiling and oh my gosh, the pure chaos. I think we just relate to that in just the world <laughs> is we have all these preparations and rules about how to go through things and protocols, but when shit actually happens, it looks like that. And it's just like hilarious to see it from all different angles. And I, two things on that question is one, sometimes it be so you're like you're saying that, that's a, that's a, like a meme for humanity yes. just in general, like yes. everybody. Yes. And once again, no one knows what they're actually doing, yeah. but if you sometimes if you sit back and watch a CrossFit class from the outside, it can look like that because your coach is in there and all of our coaches are are top notch about being engaged on on the floor and everything, but you don't have eyes all around your head. There are things going on in class that are just wild and if you watch from the outside in our dream gym, guys, I want a loft. A lot of gyms have lofts already i want a loft in our gym so i can just watch the class from above because one of my favorite things to do i learn a lot from them but i also get a few laughs out of it and what if we had a loft here's an idea loft with a coconut chair you know, <laughs> like, with with see-through mirrors and then we have a big speaker and it's like god and when we see somebody like doing something wrong it'd be like don't do that <laughs> I, was, I didn't know who whose name to use whose name can i use don't be calling anyone out right now. Fred. <laughs> Put clips on. Fred, <laughs> stop dropping the barbell. <laughs> that would be scary. Yeah. And the second thing is I wanted to get more exercise And then like a lightning bolt balls. sound can come on. <laughs> Anyways. Who has the Dory brain now? I'm doing pretty good today. I'm staying more focused than I normally do. But the other thing is I wanted to tell you I wanted more ex- like two extra exercise balls in here. I don't know if they have a name. Bosu balls or are those the half ones? Those are the half ones. Um, but I wanted the full exercise ball. The last time we had one, Blitz was a puppy. Someone kicked it and that thing died after that because he played fetch with it. Immediately died. But I do want some exercise balls in here. We just have to put them in a safe spot. Good question. Do you have a program to help build lat strength? I can do a few strict pull-ups. I can do kipping chest a bar, but I want to string chest a bar together and get a muscle up. I've got this question a few times on IG lately, and that makes me so happy because you guys are watching my videos. Because I do say in order, and I'm going to make a, a very specific, I just got to get through my the rest of my ring muscle up program, which the final week is this week, week six. I'm going to make a specific video on this, on why a lot of people can do kipping pull-ups, but they can't do a kip, connected kipping chest bar and are nowhere near a bar muscle up. You guys are listening to my videos, obviously, because it has a lot to do with your lat strength. And... I'm going to give you guys a little hint or the, I can't really do much from a podcast point of view right now. And I don't have a program on it, but I will make a video on it is how you grip the bar makes a big difference. Make sure your knuckles are on top of the bar and not on the side of the bar. That's all I can do. I can't really demo anything right now. Unless we have stick a pull up bar right here for the podcast video and just start doing demo reps for the podcast idea (laughs) we sit on exercise balls and then we put a pull-up bar right here and then we start demoing on the podcast i will make a video of that but no i currently don't how you grip the pull-up bar if you could choose if you could only do one crossfit movement for the rest of your life what would you choose go coach matt hmm in the past, it would have been snatch. I feel like that's like a, a squat good answer. snatch, um, but not now. <laughs> um, this is so hard because CrossFit is a whole bunch of movements. <laughs> it's not CrossFit anymore. Is this what I enjoy, or this what I think represents CrossFit or what you I think would keep me the most what's fit. What's challenging about this question? What would keep me the most fit? What would keep you the most fit? 
It'd have, well, have to be to, a lift. You'd have to... Because you could do a lot with that. Like a thruster? Oh. I don't want it to be that, but that would be like maybe. Yeah, that would. But you could. So I feel like you can alter a lift. Or like a clean You can jerk. make it conditioning or heavy. I think you're onto something with a yeah. thruster. But nobody wants to do that the rest yeah. of their lives. <laughs> yeah, see, I wouldn't stay consistent. Okay. I would lose my fitness. Yeah, that's where I was. You, you, I, I would have never come up with thruster because I was like, my favorite things to do are anything gymnastics. But then I turn into more calisthenics, and I feel like you'd get the most benefit from doing something with a barbell. I don't know. Your life. I think, yeah. Cause you can I think calisthenics, work. I mean, you can get Jack doing calisthenics. Oh, totally. But, but um, I think I would miss. Then you're kind of like weights. adding a bunch of things together, like pull-ups and push-ups. And it's not all one. Yeah. So if you were doing calisthenics, what what, what gymnastics movement would you do? If I was just going to say my full body, I mean, it's hard because like so many They're gymnastics so movements, you're not using your legs. <laughs> you just no. be a triangle man. I mean. With your lats That's exploding. why so many, like, if you get, yeah, most gymnasts that come in that are guys, especially, are they're under, their lower bodies are very underdeveloped. That's true. It's because their upper bodies are so developed from all the events that they do in gymnastics. That's true. So I don't think I could do that because then you'd be like, no leg day guy. Like <laughs> That's what I'm saying, a triangle. No you'd be a triangle. You'd be jacked up here and then super small down there. I think thrusters okay. might be, like, if you're just looking for pure... You guys heard it. That's a great answer. Or clean and clean and jerk. Thruster. Thrust. No, 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 no. I can jerk a lot more than I can push, press, or thruster. And I feel like that'll just give me my teeny squat. tiny okay, little here. arms. Squat, clean, and press. That's squat, a... clean, thruster. Oh, okay. So you're hinging. So you're pulling it from so the you're ground. Hinging, squatting, and pressing. Yes. Wow. Squat clean thruster. Hey, we're doing wow. this tomorrow in the class workout. How weird is really? that? Yeah. Wow, we live in a simulation. Wow. What an answer. Okay, this question is for Blitz. Is he a mama's boy or a daddy's boy? Blitz, game it up. Blitz, who do you like more? Me or Matt? Who do you like more, bud? I do. Blitz. Show your show your new following. Check out Blitz's new column. Yeah. But neither of us gave him that. That was a gift to him. So honestly, fresh. Blitz is totally a daddy's boy. But if he gets in trouble, you know he runs straight to me. <laughs> no, if it's, it's if, he, if he's in trouble or if he's like hurt a little bit or not feeling good. Yeah, he'll go cuddle with me. He'll go cuddle. Just because if he's not feeling like he ate but, something bad. One of the funniest things to watch is at 3 p.m. when we go train in the afternoon, Blitz just sits and waits in the gym to wrestle with you. Yeah. They play rough in the afternoon. The Wrestling, lots of fetch. It's kind of hard in the heat right now. But, yeah, there's your answer. He's definitely a daddy's boy, but if he needs his, his mom, he'll definitely come run into me. <laughs> yeah, or if I'm disciplining him. Yeah. yeah. He goes, help, help. Okay, um, we're going to do a streak of animal questions that need to be rapid fire. Be rapid Are fire, you ready? Yeah. Biggest animal you could duct tape to a wall. you got to be able to lift the animal. So I'm going to say... Oh, I got it. An emu. Turtle. Why is your answer always a turtle Because the tortoise? turtle can't move enough to get loose. But you could get a big-ass turtle and like tape him up there. And he's not going to be... bite you. Big turtles bite. No, he's just... Turtle. Not an emu. An emu's going to peck my eyeballs out. <laughs> They're more dynamic. The turtle's too slow to get of... out of the, the tape. They'll be that's like... That's the biggest? That's so it's gotta the biggest? It's got to be a slow... Yeah. Because turtles weigh a lot. What else? No, 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 no. It didn't say heaviest. It okay. said biggest. What is, what is biggest? Biggest is the heaviest. Not densest. This is a dentist. <laughs> Big as in size. Snake. Snake is a good answer. That that would work. 
That'd be, I feel like a snake would be. No, you're, it's you're not, worried about the emu. It's, it's, you're telling gonna, me the turtle's no, going to bite me? It's going to slither on out that duct tape. You're worried, that about the, you're worried about the turtle biting you, but not the <laughs> gigantic <laughs> anaconda that you're going to try to put on the wall? That's a Do good answer. How, no, those are, anaconda. they're way too heavy. And it's like long ways. Like you would take so much tape. Are we to not going to work as a team to get this thing on you, the wall? It's, turtle is the answer. <laughs> I like how you're always fighting. Like this is the answer to these questions. Turtle is the answer because it weighs a lot. You get a big one, and it's just not going to be able to move out of the tape. They move too slow. Snapping turtles are fast, right? In the Probably water. In the water. I'm going to stick with my answer and say an email. <laughs> <laughs> just to prove your turtle point wrong. Emu. Emu's not even where, big. Where does it's a it's a I didn't pick an ostrich because that's the biggest bird. You just picked a weird animal. I like emus too. Where does your squid fawn? Oh, it could, no, come no, the from? it could be a squid, a sea creature. Sorry, we'll move on. If the duct tape's not gonna work on a sea creature, they're slimy. I don't know where the squid fondness comes from. I think it's just the fact that I relate to a squid. Weird, the eyes are out here, <laughs> doing some of that. I don't know. I like squids. I think they're cool and mysterious. And I wish I could see one, but I don't think that's going to happen one day. That's my real life mission is to go find a squid. Some little squids. Some big ocean. squid. Big squid. How many turkeys do you think it would take to take down a bear? Regular sized turkeys. Why do you always have to add more to these questions? Like a turkey is a turkey. Okay. Imagine a turkey, Infinity. imagine a bear. They're not going to work together. It's going to be like one of those karate movies, like Bruce Lee, where like the bad guys come one at a time, and he just like kicks one, and then like, why didn't you guys all attack him at once? The turkeys aren't smart enough to or to pick a leader and like all go peck him at once. So, the, do you know something about turkeys? Do do turkeys not work together if one of them is in trouble? Well, I don't know. I feel like you not enough to take down a bear. The turkey apocalypse. Not enough to take down a bear. Turkeys turn on us on Thanksgiving. I mean, I guess there's a number that the bear just had to continue to. Fight. There's there's enough where there's, the turkeys the, just the, start pecking at this bear. No, and he the bear's just would, like ah, that he hurts. would just kill so many turkey... that he exhausted himself. That there were so many that they just exhausted him. So you're, I I would say one thousand. No, way more than that. The bear can take out like 10 turkeys with one swipe or more. Thousand. I'm definitely closer than you. Where are you going to get infinite turkeys? Um, okay, those were our animal questions. Great job. Great job. I think you won that one. Next question. Will you make it to the CrossFit Games ever again? I just put that one on there because I like how it was worded. Ever again. I think so. I think so. I think so. Next question. Also on that note, will you be competing at Wadapalooza? That's the plan, guys. We should see you guys in Miami this upcoming January. Unless something changes. I plan to. I saw Six you were away. into... WWE. What other things do you geek about? I like the WWE. I think I could do a good job of flipping and twisting and punching people and wrestling in the ring. I don't know. What other things? I, I get on these random other... That's been something I've always kind of... I've liked just because of sports and go sports. Uh, we get on the... I don't... I don't have anything else that I really geek about. I just get on these rampages of well, now we're watching cowboy shows. And I'm like, I'm going to go rope blitz and I'm going to be a cowboy and just little things like that. Hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled <laughs> eggs. That's what I geek out about. Eggs just amaze me. Go chickens. You're just making <laughs> so many of them right now. It's like you're. I know. I'm becoming an expert boiled egg peeler. I got my, my technique down. So if you guys need hard boiled eggs, hit your girl up. 
I got you. <laughs> My little $14 egg maker. $15. I don't know. Dos mas preguntas. Did you hear that? Was that? Did I say the right word? Wow! I'm getting so good at this. <laughs> that means two more questions. When did you start CrossFit? And tell us the story. Well, a long time ago, I was a gymnast, just starting Hayden Gymnastics. I retired from gymnastics in 2013. In 2013, I started turning into a couch potato that didn't know what to do. And my mom said, you're coming to CrossFit with me. That's exactly how it went. And I said, no, I don't want to go to CrossFit. And it was a hero workout. And she told me the workout, and I was like, no, I don't want to go do that. And then she dragged me over here to Bolt, and I did the workout and got my ass kicked by it, but I liked it. So 2013, when I was 13 years old. But So you were forced? Forced. Like, forced. Not really. Not really. She had been bugging me for a while to come try it out in 2013, and finally... I was just like, fine, I'll go do some pull-ups. I can go do some pull-ups. But fun fact is I remember sitting on the ground. I thought, I mean, we have a 30-minute cap on that workout that we do every year. And I really did think I could I could finish it. Like every newbie CrossFitter, they're like, 30 minutes. I can finish that in 30 minutes. And I did the same thing. And I got capped with a few, so many reps left. I think I was getting close, but I wasn't like one or two reps off. It was just getting close. And I remember sitting against the wall like, that messed me up a little bit. And I haven't, I hadn't been training in gymnastics. We train all the time. We do an hour's worth of conditioning all the time. But I haven't trained in a couple months. So it was my first like hard breathing workout back. And I definitely got my butt kicked. But I loved it. I was like, I can be good at this because I like to suck. And so in 2013 is when I started. And I haven't left the gym since. So that's the story of it. When did you start CrossFit? But if you before you opened the gym, like when did you start doing CrossFit? Uh, I started in two thousand seven. Yeah. Yeah. So. Where do you remember? You probably remember your first ish um, CrossFit workout, or or something like I'm. I feel like yeah, you told yeah. me like I tried this CrossFit workout somewhere. Yeah, a, a friend of mine that I played football with like posted it or said, hey, try this workout. And it was Filthy 50. Ah, this might have been actually 2006 because 2007 was when I went to Honduras and we were just starting to get into it then. So I like, it was one of those things where I kind of had a routine, but I tried and I, I tried the, workout. Um, yeah, the Filthy 50 in a Globo gym, which was just chaos. And I quit. <laughs> Cause I didn't know how to do double unders. I didn't know how to do, I was doing like tug jumps. I was just like, and I died and I was like, this is pretty cool. But then I kind of just like watched dot com for a while. It was still doing whatever regular stuff I was doing then. And then finally just started doing it in the base gym with everyone just staring at me. Yeah, thinking you're crazy. No one idea what I was doing. Yeah. People still look at it like that. Well, that's cool. That's a cool story. So 2006 or seven. Yeah. Like that. Last question, and I'm going to give a big shout out to our boy, Roderick, Meme for Time. Go follow him on IG at Meme for Time. Talk about someone who's also got the hustle and really leaning into his passion for creating content and then doing what he loves. Super inspiring man. Um, follow at Meme for Time, and he asked, this will be our last question of the podcast, what the thing you love most about content creating, and what's the thing you love the least? And I, had to, I saw his question, I had to think about it for a second, because creating content is, it's like its own art, form of art in a way, you just kind of have to have an eye for it, and if you love to do it, you do more of it, and you get better with it i.e. this podcast, we kind of jumped into it not knowing what we were going to do, but we've enjoyed it, and I think we're getting a little bit better each time, each week we come around to it. So what I love most is obviously seeing 
the project come together because there's so much that goes on behind the scenes, the time and effort it takes to edit. And once again, it's just a lot of hard work that goes into this, even to create like a little 15 second clip or reels or something, but it's just so fun when it all comes together. That being said, my least favorite thing is almost the same thing, being that you will have some flops that you spend hours editing and recording and the effort to do that and it just a video or some piece of content just doesn't get out or flops or you're like that didn't that doesn't fit my standards or it didn't come out the way I wanted it to so that's and then just hours of editing can get a little bit crazy drive you a little bit crazy but it's all worth it in the end so we just have to look at just like anything in life or like so many different things when you fail, you're not, you only lose if you don't learn or grow from it. Right. And just going through the process of you tried a different edit or you tried something different or you tried a different type of content or you learn from that and you refined your skills a little bit. You got a little bit faster at editing. You don't lose everything if, it, if, it, if it's a flop. So it's an important that. thing. When you, when you lose or you fail, like just learn from it and you didn't, you still have the experience and something that makes you better and makes you you. So not true that it's not, a, it's not all lost. You know what? So cool. And I do actually have one more question to finish off this podcast with that we had to get to. Um, the cool thing I think that we do, we have to edit. We, <laughs> we have to edit. the cool thing I think that we do um, just answering these questions or that I eventually realize is all of these questions are circled around like one common thing is just hard work and lessons learned. And we're trying to figure out this crazy thing that is, that is life. And that's why we like to listen to podcasts to get people's different opinions and kind of to help us form our own. So on that note, I do have another question that I want to go more in depth on, but it'll naturally come about. It almost, it just definitely deserves its own podcast is what attracted oh. you to Matt? You want to know what the most attractive thing about you is besides your face and everything else that comes with it is your work ethic. I can honestly say, guys, if you know me and you, when you learn, when you learn more about me, why are you shaking your head? It's your work ethic and you all the other things. Me, all the other sure. things, but that, but that's the thing is, I always said, I'd never marry someone or be in a, like a serious relationship because I'm always doing things, and I did. That's what I love to do, and I'm like, I need someone that'll love to do things and work hard with me, and that's that's what God gave me. Someone who works just as hard and will stay up here at the gym all the way from open to close. And then we have just a ton of fun doing it together. And honestly, that that's probably the, the thing that made the most sense and that spoke to my heart the most is that we have goals and we don't, I know you, you don't settle for anything less than that and you work hard for it and I'm going to do the same thing. So the power is right here and i believe in it seriously same thank you that that's what nice. attracted oh it's so squishy thank you all right that's going to be a wrap on episode five and we did leave you guys with a workout today that hot shots 19 so go back and listen to that if you're looking to get a good workout and blitz we're wrapping it up Okay, he's tired today. I think he had a rough night. <laughs> like, subscribe, keep up with us every week, and go follow us on all the IGs and everything else. And we're always doing a lot of things around here. Hope you guys are enjoying it, and we love you. Thank you for all your questions and support. Bye! Later, guys.